Guys, couldn't end a week without taking a look back at uh, the incredible moves in Eastman Kodak. Of course, the one-time giant in photography, refashioning itself now, it would seem, as our maker of chemicals for the generic drug industry. We watched that stock reach over $50 a share. It began the week as about a $150 million or so market cap company. It edged up closer to over $2 billion. Why? Well, uh, it's a strange series of events, and it's sort of trying to piece it together is an interesting puzzle. But it does start, it would seem, with something called the International Development Finance Corp. Uh, and the fact that its mission originally to actually invest in developing countries was supplemented by an executive order from the president on uh, May 14th. In that executive order, um, signed May 14th, it said the chief executive officer of the DFC, the International Development Finance Corp, may use the authority as he deems appropriate for the domestic production of strategic resources needed to respond to the COVID-19 outbreak or to strengthen any relevant domestic supply chains. That seemed to result in a loan of $765 million to Kodak for the development of a business that would provide chemicals and bring them here to the United States in terms of the supply chain for the drug industry. Earlier this week, Squawk Box talked to Adam Bowler. He's the man who runs the DFC about how all of this happened. Take a listen. About two months ago, I was in uh, Air Force One with the president. He signed an executive order to allow my agency, DFC, to invest in the United States. And it's to invest in the United States to reshore critical industries, um, things that we need uh, if there's ever going to be another pandemic so that we're not caught in the same place. So Kodak was referred to us because we actually found somebody that wanted to pay, place a big advance order for pharmaceuticals in Kodak. And Kodak had been considering creating a division focused on pharmaceuticals. Kodak Pharmaceuticals. Very much unclear exactly how that came about. How did Kodak, a company we know, of course, as a, as a photography company, get to the point where it decided it wanted to produce chemicals and then communicate that and get a $765 million loan of 25 years, which was multiples of the company's market value, certainly at the time of the loan. Now, this did send the shares much higher. They are retreating today. We've talked so much about speculation in this market, the presence of traders for the likes of Robinhood. Uh, but it is certainly an interesting one. And, and, and we also spoke, or I should say Squawk Box spoke, to um, Kodak's executive chairman. He's the CEO of another company. He's executive chairman of Kodak. And here's what he said as to how they're going about using the money. We're using buildings that we already own. That drops a lot of our costs. And then through continuous manufacturing and innovation, we feel that we can become very competitive. Uh, the park we're building in is Eastman Business Park. It's 1,200 acres, has its own power, steam, waste recovery, rail system. I mean, the infrastructure's there. I'm not paying for that. Those are huge costs that come out of this, you know, this entity. And uh, that gives us a very competitive advantage. Well, you know, we're not going to know if anybody's sold. Contends to take a look at his stock options in terms of their expiration, in terms of how many shares he had. And then we'll end as well, guys, with the overall ownership. Uh, as I pointed out, George Carfunkel, Renee Carfunkel, the biggest single owners of Kodak. I think we have all that for you. There's his stock options. Mm. And there's uh, the largest owners. It's been a great week for anyone who owned Kodak at levels prior to this week.